Dave, yeah, do you want to sit over here? Uh, yeah, please. Water, sure. Oh. <laughs> you know you're a man upset, uh, because you don't throw them enough. Um. Mixed down, but also mixed in, like a Dairy Queen blizzard. That's really, I like that. I'm going to be extra nice to you today. Thank you. That's actually really funny. Also, like, yeah, I love blizzards. I love those. Do you really, though? Yeah. Yeah. I used to uh, go to Dairy Queen often. Um, and arm wrestle the guys there for free treats. I was always a really good arm wrestler, and the people that worked there, I don't know if I could call, say, big black people, but the, the, <laughs> typically where I grew up, the Dairy Queen, uh, it was all big black people, and uh, they were, they I think, wrongly assumed that they could beat me in arm wrestling. Um, similar to how Apollo Creed looked at Rocky Balboa in the first Rocky, and I oh, would yeah. arm wrestle them for it, and if I win, I get a free treat. Well, it was earthquake. Usually, that, that earth, was a new thing. You mean a brownie earthquake Sunday? Yeah, or a Wait, blizzard. so many people don't know about that. Well, they weren't arm wrestlers like us. Um, are, we're rolling. We're good, right? Are we going? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you remember what's in the brownie earthquake Sunday? I didn't get it much. I just knew it was brownies and ice cream. And I think it, did it have the, it didn't have the Marshmallow sauce. Chunk. And Marshmallow I think sauce. it had um, Oreo. It was an Oreo brownie earthquake Sunday. Um, and my dad would always be like, why do you have to get like the craziest thing there? Your dad's always been tough on you, huh? Yeah. yeah. So it's okay. Um, <laughs> your dad and food, dot, 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 the whole family, dot, 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 it's wild. We say that for the subtitles. But um, we would love for, to have you included, but then like. No, I, I assume we're not doing the show. Oh, we are. Oh. We're going. This is all in. Yeah. But like we would love to, could we get you a microphone? Well, we probably couldn't hear him anyway. But if we did hear a little bit, um, Anthony, I think what we might have to do is do a voice modifier. No, he doesn't. He's literally hiding in his shirt. I don't think. Do you want a that. microphone? You can have a microphone without a camera. Would you be okay with that? In case yeah, you, okay. that'd be great. You love it. Yeah. Yeah. And is that going? That mic's going. I can turn it on. Fantastic. But if you want to see them from here, I'll take them from Great. No camera. We'll animate it. Um, should we reveal who who it is talking? Is that your manager, or um, do we not want to say? It's so. He could. He said, "You could say it's me. I might not. Dot dot dot. I might not talk." <laughs> um. No. So today in the house is that what we call it here? Our house. In in the studio. Yeah. Okay. In the studio. However, if we did have merch, I would like to have in this house. We have a time. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Quite on set. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're distracted because there's a lot going on right now. But, but um, in the studio. No, okay. So I haven't been feeling well. Um, I'm adjusting some medication. I'm doing some things. And so today my chaperone joined me. Mm. Um, so the chaperone is here. Now we refer to him as a chaperone? Yeah. Because I remember you used to refer, you made fun of me for uh, when I referred to him as your partner. But now sometimes you do refer to him as your I partner. I do. And then there was a period of time where I referred to him as the associate. Because you were watching Suits. No, but I did think of clicking on that recently because of you. What a show. How is that possible? A lot of people say that because it's like, oh, it was like, I never didn't watch it when it was out and blah, it's blah, blah. It's so blah. random. It's on like the most random network, like TNT or no, something. No, I don't think that's as random as True TV or Freeform. But there's no great together. dramas on True TV. So if there was a great. Well, there, there's Tacoma FD, which is a great comedy. What? By, really? That's a show? By the Broken Lizard Gang. Throw, we'll throw, put up a thumbnail here. Where is Tacoma? Wisconsin? Uh, you know where Tacoma is, right? Tacoma? Is Tacoma? Washington? Washington? Yeah. That was my guess, I just because so. it sounds like it, but yeah. I don't know. C-Tac. It's giving Wisconsin for a Midwest Where girl. is Tacoma? Washington. Um, yeah, it's the guys that did um, Super Troopers and Beer Fest. I just had them on my podcast and love those guys. And they are the... They have a show. It's season four, but it's true TV. Uh, and you know who is on it? Who... Uh, if if we were to say who is one of the funniest people that we know that isn't a household name, or arguably, I'd even say you might not even know his name. No, that could be so many people. There's so right. many funny. It's people. just a setup. I, I have the answer. Okay. No, if I asked why the chicken crossed the road, even if you have a punchline, you would say why. 
uh, to get a John Dairy Queen Ritzky. Blizzard. Oh, I love him. Do you he's know him? so yeah, he's, he's, he's so sweet. Player. The fr- I think he was there like the first time I went to SNL and I was backstage or like in the offices and I felt so insecure cuz like you know how it is. Like we're just regular comedians. We've never been on SNL. I don't feel that way, but I get why you would and okay. I'm not being mean. And so I remember I was like walking through the halls and then John who I didn't even know yet was like, "Hey Esther." And I was like, "Oh my god." And so he made me feel really special. He's a special boy. He's. Re- <laughs> I'd like to have him as a guest on here at some point. I'm so down. He's the, he is the, the best version of Jewish complaining. Oh, he's so not Jewish, but that's crazy. You're right. He is Rudnitsky. He's Jewish. I should have known. He, out of all the guests I've had on, and as I'm sure you know, I've had huge celebrities. He is the one that is the most, he is like, I don't know if I want that to go in there. <laughs> oh, really? That's yeah. that's very. Jewish. I don't know. I, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be saying this stuff. You know, and it's like <laughs> funny, but like he means it. I don't know. I just. Do you think it comes across as? But like John, why don't we talk about this later? We're still doing the podcast. Wait, can I tell you? I know I'm like backtracking, but the fact that you arm wrestled and your free treat was like the most premium thing on the menu is really blowing my mind. Like I thought maybe you get like a peanut bu- peanut buster parfait bar. I'm not gonna arm wrestle for the Texas toast. <laughs> Do you remember that? The for not all Dairy Queens had this, but there was a brazier. Mine brazier? didn't have brazier. I don't know. I just I only know of that as the porn site, but I don't never know how to say it. Brazzers. Brazzers, right? Yeah. Is that are we saying that right? The, I don't the know. The bra, brazier? They had that meant they had food. Ours didn't have food. So they had the chicken strip basket and it always and it came with fries, chicken fingers, with barbecue sauce, which was, you didn't know, bullseye. Bullseye what? barbecue was their barbecue, a good <laughs> smoky one. And it came with this thing that they call Texas toast. I hadn't heard of it, but they butter it. So I'd always get the chicken strip basket, no butter on the Texas toast. Okay. And I ate the toast and loved it. You know how sometimes people will comment on our videos like there's sexual tension between them? Like, I'm actually feeling it right now. You, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> him talking about Dairy Queen in this great detail. I'm like, it's not actually sexual, but the it's like... The one time I'm here is when you... <laughs> want to be like, sexual I'm just... Tension? You know what I mean. Well, a- w- w- how does that make you feel? It's asexual tension. Oh, okay. So not a sexual tension, but a hyphen sexual. Hey, by the way, and I've I've never seen you do anything where I could... Great save. (laughs) (laughs) And I also almost believe her because I don't think that she could come up with that. No, it was and (laughs) sexual tension. Yeah, great. Great. Wait, what other fast food restaurants are you Well, I don't want to talk talk about Taco Bell in front of your partner over here. But (laughs) let's just say uh, I was spending $20 on an order before COVID. Before the prices went up. Why were we talking about to come after the, oh, the, the, the channels? The randomness of channels. Yeah, but well, you well, were oh, talking suits. about suits. So I watched Suits when it came out, like the first season maybe, and I liked it. And then the second season comes out, and it's however many months later, and you it fall, it's hard to keep up. It's so hard. But I do remember <laughs> thinking, is that okay? <laughs> I do remember thinking that like this was a good show, but you forget about it. I see on TikTok. I didn't even realize that they they just went to Netflix. So that's probably why people were pushing it at the time. But I saw on TikTok a scene from the pilot. Not a spoiler, but I'm going to say this. It's literally the thesis of the show. Guy who never graduated from law school sneaks into an uh, interview to be a lawyer at this prestigious law firm in New York. And the guy, he's like, he didn't go to law school. He's like, get out of here. He's like, Goodwill Hunting esque, different tone, same uh, principle, photograph, me memory. Um, no, because he isn't. Uh, he isn't trying to fool the lawyer. The oh, lawyer knows, okay. but he's able to to convince the lawyer, even though I never went to law school, and this is illegal, and this is a dangerous thing. I'm going to show you how valuable I am by like. Uh, open up this page of this book and say any sentence, and he like he has everything memorized, and he is so. Well, you roll your eyes at everything, so I assume that just means you're happy. It the the that scene on TikTok, I'm like, fuck, I remember that show was so good. I want to rewatch it. And I just rewatched the pilot just to see that scene again. Hooked from the pilot. Do you see yourself in that guy that has the books memorized? No. Oh, okay. No. But my girlfriend did ask if you if you could be anybody in this show, who would it be? And he is somebody who You didn't say Meghan Markle? No. You don't want to be a princess? This is controversial. Okay. I don't want to get into the Harry Meghan stuff. Okay. I have a lot of strong opinions on them. This is a thing. That, you know how I will be like, I have a question. This is what you do. You're like, I can't go there because I have too much to say. Right. So 
do you ever see people where they go like, I shouldn't get into it. And the people are like, come on, come on. And you're building up excitement and anticipation. Oh, like, okay. So see you. Yeah. That's so it's like a pre-established bit. You need to give me like a, a notebook. Oh, with like, I, here's need, I my need to give you an encyclopedia. Arms tired, like, we'll be right back. Like, all the ones that I need to be knowing about. Right, but that's not a specific thing to me. You just want a book on comedy devices and structure. Yeah, you've you've offered it before. I, I, I got to tell you something. <laughs> and I've told you this, I think, maybe even on this podcast. I want to do a comedy class, teach a comedy class. I know. What do you think about that? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, teaching comedy in general is a little tough. But sure, I just don't. If you like teaching, do you man, like that, teaching? You just took a 180, huh? What? I That's mean, what we call in comedy a turn. <laughs> right. That is. So that's the kind of thing you'd be teaching. And I would teach you how you do that <laughs> multicam version. Would be ask me if uh, if you should teach a comedy course. Ask you if you should. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deliver yeah, what you did. Yeah. The comedy turn, but for a multicam. Do you th what do you think about that teaching a comedy Oh, course? that's stupid. There's no reason to do it. People would go and you'd make a little bit of money. You know what? I don't think it's such a bad idea. Oh, I have a different okay. version. Okay. Ask me. Esther, do you think what do you think about teaching a comedy course? Never. I would never do Okay. Yeah. I didn't do it quite that's as what good. You need to take it. I, yeah. I get what you were doing. You weren't having thoughts. You were changing your point of view yeah. without turning it. So if Give me you, another chance. No, let me explain. If you want to do it by energy as opposed to actual having a turn, because you're you're boom to boom. We want to see a quick turn to it. Okay. M may, I I, could... may, may I give the direction though? Yeah. Bigger. Yeah, okay. I'm a little, like I said, the medication. Okay. And still have a beat. And it could even be a yeah. half a beat of the real You know what? I have a turn, not just a teleport. What should I say? Can you? I give think me you the should. Lines? I think you should. Do you think you should do a comedy class? N I could not do that. That is just kind of embarrassing. I'd probably be pretty good at it. I think you took too long. I don't think. I, I believe. You, I believe you took a beat because you were supposed to instead of having the thought. Watch my eyes. Ask me. Why? Watch my eyes. Do you think you should teach a comedy class? I think that's kind of a little stupid and a corny. You know, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? You know, you go like this. Go like this in between, <laughs> and then try. But you didn't even do it. I'm just pitching it to you. I okay. could do the delivery if you'd like to actually okay, see no, it. Okay, okay, okay. Esther, I think you should do a comedy class. No, that's really not for me. I don't. Go. Cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the stuff we're gonna teach you at Rick Glassman School of Comedy. I'm also gonna teach you the importance of <laughs> farts. You know what? But don't you feel like it's actually anti-comedy to teach these? <laughs> okay, you did get me there. But it's kind of anti-comedy to teach these like sort of old rhythms and stuff because it's actually better. Isn't the realist comedy just honest reacting Absolutely. and not devices? So what you're talking about is honesty being present and point of view. Absolutely. And that's particular to each individual. And that's the special thing they have to offer. But within that are just the tools in your. Like, Did you I, take Leslie Kahn? No, okay. I taught it. I would like to say that your waist, you your waist is your point of view. My but, waist? But your, you fanny pack, my waist? but your fanny pack that you put around it is where you carry these tools and devices. Okay. You know what? This is a really funny story. It just doesn't have the right beats. What am I missing? Reach into your bag, see what you got. Fart sounds, gulps, <laughs> energy, burps, and this, farts. And this is what I'm going to be teaching. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to teach falls, how to fall funny. Falling isn't funny, believing the fall is. So it's not about the fault, it's about the trip that made you fall. I think Dave's initial reaction was maybe. Yeah, that's why one. he's a writer. Yeah. But you know what writers know? Structure, devices. Yeah. And they rely on the actors to pull them off, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh! Oh! What? <sighs> Fall comedy. Very, very good. I honestly like respect it. It's not mm -hmm. my thing. Like, I know. I'm just that's not where I excel. I'm more like just kind of. What is your comedy? Honest, open. Yeah. Accidental. So is that why? Accidental. You, is that why you're being so open about your medication? Yeah. Why won't you tell the brand? The brand of medication adjustment. Don't even say it unless we get them as a sponsor, actually. Okay. I don't think we want... It's kind of shady, though, when people get medical sponsors. Oh, absolutely. Like, it'll... Like, I feel like it can get really random, but... It depends on what it is. I'm all for, like, things like marijuana. 
like getting a sponsor for a drug that maybe isn't we pic- should stop talking about this because actually i will have any sponsor i don't want to like just the idea i remember learning uh, uh i was i was a uh, uh a, a business marketing major and did a lot of advertising courses and i remember when i first learned the difference between push and pull marketing do you know what that is tell me uh, push marketing is telling the consumer what they want basically mm-hmm. um pull marketing is having something that that serves as a need that's out there mm-hmm. and like uh, uh, uh um push marketing is 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 is, you have uh, to educate the consumer on why they need it. Uh, that's just marketing. General. It's it's advertising to the uh, to the person, uh, advertising through who needs it. For example, um, m- doctors should be educated on what the medication is. Mm-hmm. But now we're pushing it to the end user who otherwise wouldn't be educated in it. Example: You go into your doctor. I think I want Lexapro now. Let the professional tell you what you should have. You know, I actually see it both ways because I fully, when I see commercials for medicine, I I roll my eyes. I'm like, this is horrible. I feel how you feel. But then I'm also like, not everyone goes to the doctor that often. And like some doctors don't know about every medicine. It's like, sometimes I will watch TV and hear a commercial and I'm like, wait, I, maybe I need that or like someone I know needs it. That's why I think it's a problem because now you have all these people thinking they need something because it was marketed to them. Perhaps... But you can market something that someone doesn't know, didn't know they needed it until they saw it, but that doesn't mean that they don't need it. What you're saying, I feel, would be educating them the importance on behavioral adjustment medications and antidepressants and stuff. But to say this brand. It could be like a health thing. Okay. Listen, well, they're doing it and it's legal. I just don't like it. Like some, okay. Um. I see your side. I do, but I see both sides. Uh, it would be like having an audience come to the show and people had been advertising to them what type of jokes that they they need. And people going, I'm coming. I want this joke. And I'm like, I'm the professional here, buddy. I don't I'll tell you. I think it's the same thing. Oh, I think it's directly analogous. You? I don't know. It's kind of an analogy, but it's certainly... Well, it's an, it, it's but an analogy. The, the problem with the analogy is that like, it is expected that you'll talk to your doctor about what you need. Right. It's not expected that you go to a comedy club and talk to the comedian about what kind of jokes... In other need. countries, it's not, a, it's not legal to have medication advertised to the patient. I'm on your side about advertising medication, but I'm not on your side about the analogy. I, it's not a literal analogy. You understand that. It's just basically. It's not a the, literal the, analogy. What but What is it then? The, uh, I'm, the analogy isn't about that. This is your issue with the. Uh, like, Mag, uh, let me get this out and then, then tell me what okay. you're going to say. Are you saying it's a figurative analogy? Uh, yes, as they all are. Well, hope, not all, but uh, my, my analogy is yeah. specific to the audience is the patient. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying the stakes are the same. And I'm not saying it's ex- the expectations are the same. But what I'm saying is. The comedian professional is to the audience in that world as the doctor is to the patient in theirs. So already there's a lot of differences and expectations that are different. Yeah. That being said, the prof- let the professional tell the audience and the patient. And if you don't like your doctor, go see a new one. If you don't like the comic, don't go anymore. But I don't want to. If I were a doctor and and you came in and you bruised your knee and you're like, I need this pain medication, and I'm aware of the fact that you have stomach issues, it's going to fuck up your bowels. These are addictive medications. Your father is an alcoholic. You're not thinking about these things, but you have your mind set out. I'm like, I don't want to prescribe you that. So that's not doc- what I do. Then the doctor says that. Then the doctor says that. Is that yeah? Is that what the that that what the Michael Keaton show was about? Doctors, what? doctors are going to give you what they want because, unfortunately, in this world, it's about money. And I'm being serious when I say this. They're in the service business now. Doctors are now in the service business. I agree with that, but I just think that, like, now that I know your analogies like are not considered real analogies, I it makes explains why I've never really gotcha. But they are real analogies. They're not literal. Yeah. By definition. I think they're. I think your analogies are always like missing one piece of the puzzle. I'm like the Michael puzzle. Jordan of basketball. Yeah. My analogies are, are pretty good. Okay. Totally. That's a simile though. And that's a comedy device. Kind of. I think it's just kind of being a dick, but sure. What? Me. That uh, being the Michael Jordan of basketball? No, no. Pointing out that it's a simile and not an analogy. You think you were being a dick? Yeah. Oh, I, I thought you were just being literal. And that's... Well, yeah. The difference 
Okay. <laughs> um, we could say anything we want now because people have already turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> Where were we? We were talking about suits. Okay. I could move on from suits. Well, unfortunately, you, you wouldn't can't. be able to say that if you just even watched the pilot because <laughs> that show is something special. How was your trip home? Hi, I'm Rick Glassman from Rick and Esther Have a Time. And I have learned that there are not only one, there's not only one love language, there's five. Wait, we're talking about Babbel. This is where we learn foreign languages. It's Ugh, so I'm much- I'm already speaking something so foreign. It's so much better than love languages. Of course, as everybody out there knows, we only agree to do ads and we've turned some down that we believe in the product. Yeah. But there's still something I feel about it being an, I'm giving an ad. Like for example, if I were to say, there's a special for a limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now to get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash have a time, it would feel like a mouthful. People want to hear that. Well, how would they say that in French? Voici une offre spéciale pour nos auditeurs pour vous aider à démarrer dès maintenant. Obtenez 55% de réduction sur votre abonnement Babel sur babel.com baroblique avatime. All jokes aside, I have used this before and it does seem like a very intuitive way to learn the language learning, if you have an intuition to want to learn it. It's the easiest way I've ever found to learn a new language and... Oh, you have used it? Yes, and I find that like learning a new language is the most fun way to feel like a smart person. Sorry, I've already learned so quickly. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash have a time. Spelt B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash have a time. Rules and restrictions may apply. Hey, Rick, I hear you're going to be in Brooklyn. When is that again? It's funny that you bring that up. Uh, September 29th, Union Hall. Check me out. Buy the tickets. Link in description. What? Okay. At Union Hall, September 29th, I'll be doing a headlining show in Brooklyn. Uh, if you want to buy tickets, the link is in the description. I love water, man. Have you been drinking it? Not really. You should. <laughs> um, trip was good. Spent a lot of time in New York, a lot of time in New Jersey, a lot of time in Cleveland. Okay. And if you can't tell. Yeah, they, they look, they're looking tired. Thank you. And uh, normally when I go stay with my girlfriend, it's not for necessarily too long and I'm podcasting and it's a vacation and I go, I'm not going to do shows. I'm mm -hmm. just here. And I'm like, I'm here a lot now. And why am I not doing shows? So I started doing shows. I saw and, that. And I get the, I, 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 I've done shows in New York. I haven't done shows. Maybe I've done a couple that I don't remember, but I haven't really performed there since my podcast. And it's cool. It's so fun to do stand up in New York. Yeah. Wait, you, you really haven't done it in that long? The amount of times I've been to New York since my podcast have been with the exception of a couple of visiting my girlfriend, a couple of days for press or for something. Oh yeah, and it's that's like, hard, yeah. Yeah, after that, I want to go to my room. I want to order some room service. I want to I want to have a, you know, have a time. I found, I have found that being in New York, like as an LA comedian can be so intimidating. Like there's just so much that I don't know and I'm not familiar with. So that when I have popped in for like a week or two, or, you know, weekend even, it's like, I don't want, I'm like too intimidated, but it was, it took me going for two months to like really get to know the clubs and like mm -hmm. this, the system and the routine. And now I feel like a lot more confident there. They really get analogies in New York. Okay. They do. Okay. So that's why I like it. Okay. That, okay. I like the crowds. I like the new, I also really like, yeah, I like when I'm in New York, I feel like the audiences are more like people like me. How would you describe who you, what you are? Uh, Just down to earth, nitty gritty. Smart young lady. Yeah. Jewish. There's a lot of smart young Jewish ladies in New York. Yeah. Believe me. <laughs> and I feel like there's not that many in LA. It's most, I feel like the comedy club goers are like older couples here. Whereas in New York, it's like younger, hipper people. I hear on podcasts and I hear from our peers mm -hmm. talking about these things. And I'm just must not be in the zeitgeist there because I I like doing it because it's like, oh, I'm in New York. Look at me. But I don't notice a, everybody. I don't notice any differences in anything. Mm. The, like more shows are below street level in New York. There's a lot more brick walls in New York. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a lot more young, smart, beautiful Jewish women in New York. Okay. But See, other than that, okay. what I do notice that is a difference is, and this is not so much specific to stand-up other than I'm talking about it from stand-up 
as like point of view but like i'm in a place that isn't my home place i know of these people who this is their home place like mark normans and the jordan jensen and the sam morels and like the people that are like oh look at those those are the new, that's the new york gang those are the popular kids at the new york school okay and i now feel like i don't go to the school so you're basically just saying what i just said maybe analogously no i don't think so i'm just telling you my my, my feeling okay. my feeling isn't about the crowds my feeling but, is about the, uh, the what about the, the beginning the part where i said like oh you're just like it's a whole different place i don't feel like i belong here i don't feel like i don't belong okay that's actually the crux of the point i'm making am i using that word right making <laughs> which is i don't know this is a school that i don't go to i could i could empathize with going to a school and or like join either visiting or joining like i don't know anybody and but, this is an interesting feeling that I like, which is I'm going to the school. This isn't my school, but like I belong here. Like I'm going into I, I went to a, a cellar for the first time with Jordan, okay. um, who I've told you, I, I don't think on here. But when you're talking guests, I want Jordan Jensen on this podcast. Great. I like her a lot. Um, and like I felt like I've never I hadn't been there yet, uh, but I felt like. Yeah, I would I, I want to play here uh I, people are i feel like it didn't happen but i felt like oh if i walked in and people said the take your shoes off podcast people would be like oh they know me like there's a confidence i have where i i uh i never had before when i was there okay which is like i think that, i do belong here i think that makes sense like and i'm friends with those if you people. haven't been there since before your podcast it's been like a long time and so you're probably a more like well-developed like human and you have more confidence. I, I definitely more confidence and it's less because of my ability as a comedian and more because I know the kids. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. if I were friends, if I, if I knew those guys that I've podcasted with so much yeah. before I would have felt different. Okay. So like knowing the people. Okay gives me this confidence we've that's known not really all about those comedy people a long time like you not and i me. were new faces together i didn't know them yeah did you were you friends with those people um some of them yeah like i, I don't know i think I'm, I'm like am i more social than you or something maybe. like but that doesn't make sense maybe i go to new york more or maybe i don't know i had my little group of friends yeah and i would make i would like make sketches and do stuff at home you remind me of this guy I went to high school with who like he's still best friends with all his same friends from elementary school like I feel like you have that energy I am still good friends with my friends from grade school but there aren't that many of them I am too but I think the difference is like I feel like you 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 seem like the kind of person where like you make friends and then you just want to stay with those friends maybe there is a convenience factor to it that I became more aware of, like as an adult, like as an adult, I'll say five, 10 years. So still a while now, but like Amir K is a great example of this. And I've thought about this before. I love Amir. Yeah, same. I, I don't see him that much. If he lived within five miles of me, I bet you he would be one of my best friends. I see. So you see the people who live close to you. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were younger, you see people because we're all waiting to get up and then we're going to open mics and it was more a convenient friendship yeah than making a point to see each other i've seen you more in the past couple of months than we've probably seen in the decade plus that we've known each other yeah um or at least had conversations and you you're one of my oldest and 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 yeah you're one of my longest i don't know oldest sounds like you being like we've been out of all my friends you're in the top five percent of who i've known the longest yeah same. but there's a convenience now because of the podcast yeah the convenience thing is interesting like i i don't blame it because i have that same mm -hmm. issue and i think like i do not to be like so on the conversation of like new york versus la but i do think it is like a huge la issue that seeing people is so inconvenient and like almost somehow a more isolating process because you're like in your car and you're like mm -hmm. stuck in traffic and and you go you go home when you're done with a thing as opposed to i'm out i'll stay out yeah like i'm gonna oh i'm out i'll walk i'll stop at like and get a drink here whatever you know like at a convenience store i think see that where they filmed hey arnold and like check that stuff out they filmed hey arnold in new york 
Oh, okay. But just there's so many things to see. Yes. So I do. That's like a thing that makes me sad about living in LA is like if someone isn't your neighbor. Hey, you got to make a point. I've been doing that more. How so? I've literally called Amir numerous times and made plans to do stuff with him. And that's just uh, an example, uh, a microcosm. But uh, like making a point to call friends more. Also, the podcast has really gifted that to me. And I've, as I've become more aware of it, I've like even asked people on my pod. I've had Adam Ray on my podcast so many times. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see Adam not on the podcast. In fact, I have done that. But it's like, come pod- let's podcast. Just because I was always friends with him. He became one of my best friends because of podcasting. So it's like... Wait, really? That's how you guys became best friends? I, I was close friends with him for a long time, but not as close as now. Same with Eric Griffin. Those two are guys that I've known for a long time and I've always liked so much. But what are we going to do? See you after a show? Maybe go to a thing if we're all doing something? I think this might just be like it means we're adults. Because it's like adults. I probably like kids see friends adults like see friends at work kids see friends because of the convenience i will i would if there was an art a debate i would i would be i'm prepared to take the side of school work social gatherings that are more common you're gonna see these people you're not making plans to see this person you're just it's convenient because there's things you want to do yeah and that like literally doesn't even exist in modern adulthood right None because of them. you're cert- you're more close with your family or you go and you do your show and then you go home because you have other obligations and or you know you're touring so you're touring by yourself or with one person if if uh if like when you're working on a tv show can i have a water sorry um when you're working on a tv show you see those people all the time and you might make friends with them yeah but then once you stop working with them, you're not seeing because it's not I know, convenient. Oh, it's so that I know a lot of like cheesy actors say this. It's like summer camp, but it's like I think I, of it like that. What? I think of it like camp. Like you become best friends and then it's like over. Yeah, because you're you're uh you're in it for the convenience. Yeah. And it's like it's here, you could throw it, I'll catch it. Thank, Thank you. you. It's in it's you have to really want it. Um, sometimes I'll, I can't think of anyone that like there's no one that's like worth driving a, like a, a cross town for I did a Disneyland trip recently yeah. and my, my, my inspiration for it was I want to do something with my friends like I want to get a couple of, couple of the guys together to go out and do our thing um, I, <laughs> the only other thing I could think to do that is movies or podcasting night at Disney I love Disney, <laughs> which we've talked about and you think is pathetic. Yeah. Um, I'm open to going and having a good time, but Dave is here. Like, weren't we just so... Uh, yeah, it's not for us. Did you pay to have the fast passes and stuff? We told, I already told, we went over this. We had a guide because yeah. I was on a Disney show. You know, people say the same thing about Vegas. And I say, what's your group? You have to have people that love being there if you don't. We love Vegas. We love Vegas. Love Vegas, yeah. I've had fun with you in Vegas, randomly. Wait. Fahim show, right? Oh, that that was the week. I can't, I'm not allowed to bring it up. I don't even know what, what you're saying, but I respect that you aren't allowed to bring it up. Well, it was the weekend that I showed up at Dave's bachelor party uninvited. <sighs> oh my gosh. That's right. And can I tell you something? Yeah. I've already said this, so maybe I don't need to. I told you you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> I said, you're out of your fucking mind. I said, if you have to do this, which is nuts and so insecure, at least text him first. <laughs> did I tell you before I did it? Oh, yeah. You said while you were there. And I I, I, oh, I, yeah. I try to talk you off the ledge. Yeah. And you said, I know, maybe, but I'm here already. I said, <laughs> then if you can't back out, text him. That's insane. <laughs> right. Didn't you, she just knock on the hotel door or something? Yeah. What if he was getting blown? <laughs> well, what? As an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> or a simile jerked off <laughs> but it all worked out because i had so much fun with you and fahim the night where he oh, was God. with his friends what it all worked out oh well for I had, her. yeah for her i i had a great time i know tell us I mean, what's so bad with your fiance <laughs> surprising you at the door because she is feeling insecure and wants to catch you in something that's not why i did it cut to a clip no that's not why i did it <laughs> Why did you do it? 
I thought it would be like really funny. No, 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 no. We talked about this. You knew that he wouldn't like it. That's not true. I swear. I swear I didn't know. I, I thought maybe it would be like, come like, oh, Lucy, you know, like an I love Lucy scene where Ricky's like a little annoyed, but it's fine. Right. Because Lucy was feeling really insecure and trying to catch it Ricky and wasn't, something. I I, it was, no. I could be remembering wrong that you maybe you didn't know, but I do remember us talking about me saying that's not something totally. he's going Everyone to like. Did. I remember my dad, like my favorite quote, he was like, you need to go to your sense room and come to your senses. Like he oh, was right. begging me not to go. Go ahead. Oh, with what? Just, oh. you were, uh, honestly, the worst part was that you flew home with me and my friends. <laughs> Because uh, in my mind, I'm like, that's still part of the mm -hmm. weekend. <laughs> and now you've like become part. Did you ask her not to? I don't really remember. I, I mean, like. I already had the flight. Showing up at, at my room and like just seeing me, that was weird. <laughs> and Will you explain that? You opened the door, you were by yourself. You weren't with your friends at the time? Yeah, well, I don't remember why, well, but I had it was like before him. dinner or something. I, had f I was following him and he and his friends. like they Following had how? You share locations? Yeah, and I, and so what I did is I have two phones, and so I left my other phone. So he thought that you were somewhere in yeah. California. And so and why do that if you thought it was fun, just to trick him? Surprise. And so I was, he had just landed with his friends. They went on like some guy's hel helicopter trip. Over right. to yeah, and how were all your arms, by the way? <laughs> tired? tired? Very yeah. tired, yeah. yeah. And so then I, they came down to the lobby, and I watched them like from across the casino. I mean, that's messed up. They made place bets at the sports book, and then I knew he was headed back to his room. So, but you handle this the exact same way you would if you were trying to murder him. Yeah, that's where the comedy is. It's like a scary oh, that's thing. That's comedy class. A scary thing made silly. Okay. So she yeah. shows up, and you knock on the door, and you were thinking. Well, luckily, I was like folding my clothes and watching the news <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of literally anything else. <laughs> And I was confused. I was like, what's going on? And whatever. And then you were like, no, you were like, I'm not. You very quickly were like, I'm not coming to dinner or whatever else. I think he was like, it was, I was like, what? He was a little scared that I was like thinking that I was going to hang out with them all weekend. Yeah, and then well, you, why did you go? I thought it would be funny and cute. Yeah, it wasn't really. <laughs> but like I said, then the then to be like oh and i'm on your flight home and it's like they're all it's not fair to the other guys <laughs> i in my opinion for like one fiance to be on that flight or just like going from the hotel to the you know what i mean it's a weird vibe yeah yeah but what you would know. you do differently there's <sighs> there's a very simple answer to this and i think you better get it right well, well, you have it locked as if you wrote it you down. You know the answer too. Sure. What would you do differently if you could do this again? Answer it's well, two you, words. You said your brand is honesty. <laughs> okay. Okay. What would I Thumbnail. do? Thumbnail. What would I do differently? Thumbnail image. Yeah. Two words. What would I do differently? Yeah. I'll give it to you in one word. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would never change anything. It was the best weekend of my life. It was so fun. I saw Celine Dion by myself. I got to hang out with Rick and Fahim. You could have done all those things. He still could have done all of those things and still given his answer. What was your well, answer? not quite. <laughs> My answer would be not go, but... But we yeah, could have gone on another trip. Yeah, you could do it another weekend or just... I or also, you could have gone and changed your mind there, and just saw Celine. There, I would have gone. Okay, there's also something about like... That's very, it triggers something inside of me whenever it's like an all yes, guys. Yes, not included. It's the attic all over again. All, it's, but particularly if it's an all boys hang, like something comes up in me where I'm like, no, I can do, I can go. Because not you feel not enough people look at you like a little boy? Because I think that's crazy. I think like, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you it is. You want to prove that you belong. Maybe. With the guys for their guys only trip. Yeah. Before marrying you, the girl. <laughs> yeah. Like it just brings out something in me where I just I have to go. So it brings up a feeling like you have to go. Yeah. Like but I what remember... about your response to that feeling? 
Right. I think, well, now Dave has said that um, we have a new policy where if I show up unannounced on a guy's trip, it's an immediate breakup no matter what. <laughs> so I have... I mean, it felt like I had to say something. <laughs> so I have Because you talked about... Because I had one recently, yeah. a guy's weekend, and you were like, should I kind of... Because I do have a friend that was going to be in town nearby, yeah, but I didn't do it. Sure, yeah. What is that feeling that if I don't go then? It's just missing out on like a life opportunity. So if I don't go to this place that I'm not wanted or included, then I'm missing out on something. Something fun, yeah. It, it, that part of... See, what's weird is I do believe that it comes from that very like childish like you said the attic missing yeah. out on the because it's not like she would even necessarily care if what we were doing it's not like she yeah. came to spy I really or like didn't. catch me doing something naughty on the I think in my stand up special it's almost I, worse that way yeah in my stand up special I had <laughs> to give some sort of reason to tell the story and so I pretended oh, did like did you talk about this on your special yeah and yeah. I, I was like oh I'm Isn't gonna see what he's up to but that was completely are you being sarcastic like you didn't want that out there or yeah, you, of course but now you're comfortable talking about it because it's already out well, there well it's already out there and right. yeah what are you gonna do? It's been incidentally, this was the bachelor party that you're supposed to have like before your wedding. We still still haven't had a wedding. <laughs> because of this? No. We're just lazy. Do but... you feel like if the wedding didn't include you, you would need to show up? Yes. <laughs> That's actually the way to get. So if he me married go. somebody else and didn't send you an invitation, <laughs> Dave married someone else. You fucking better believe I'm there. I'm like, I am there. I have hired pe teams there with me. Like, there's no hired teams. Like, I have employees working for me at the wedding with you. We. It's it's a language difference, but it's the difference between. Somebody who, but honestly, in that scenario, I'm showing up at his wedding. They are working for me. I'm so such a, not a leader. Team, that's not a team. That's those are freelancers. I'm a those are freelancers. <laughs> There's a difference between a team and freelancers, and you can tell okay. that to my 1099 and my W2s. Okay, so yes, they are. They're not getting health insurance. So you're not bringing team. You're bringing some freelancers. Yeah. <laughs> that's that seems like what the you were in that relationship. You weren't his fiance when you showed up. You were his freelancer. No. And you were going outside of your job description. <laughs> do you really think if you could do it again, you would still do it that way? I'm so... I, it was really a f unique life experience. Right. And I did do it intending to like, oh, maybe I'll write a movie about this. So it's like right, that... you could write it off. Yeah. <laughs> I only did it so I could write it off. <laughs> right. Right. It seems like you're not... You're still not quite understanding my side of the situation that's what this podcast is man and she finally thought she did because you realized right. that the analogy was figurative she thought she figured it out and i wonder is it a capability thing or an empathy thing could if if play dave role mm -hmm. reversal mm -hmm. role reversal and you could play esther okay oh yeah great <laughs> um would you uh 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 dave Tell Esther. I've always wanted to be Dave. How it felt. <laughs> how it felt when she showed up at the door. Okay. It felt scary. Say and Esther. I mean, es Dave. My name Wait, is Dave. Who are you? No. Dave. Yeah, say Esther. When you showed up at my door at my bachelor party in my hotel, I felt scared and confused. What? And I'll, may I play the therapist? I'd love to, I'd love for you to play. Go, be go. The, you don't have to play the therapist. Be the therapist. Scared and confused. How so? Well, it just caught me off guard. And I just felt like, did I do something wrong? Or like, why is this happening? Maybe like a violation of my private time. Maybe. Or is that how you felt? Yeah, that could be it. Esther, how does that make you feel hearing Dave say that? Now, how do you want me to answer? How you really think she feels? How You're, I think this is this is authentic. How I think she feels? Correct. Hearing hearing that. I know, but I had to go because it would be funny, and I'm in the back of my head. I was like, maybe I'd write a movie about it. And you did make me feel comfortable right away. Esther, Esther, <laughs> Esther, Esther. It's really try to answer how you think Dave feels. Okay. This is not comedy. You. Sh this is your wheelhouse. 
just how does Dave feel? How does it make you feel, Dave, to hear that Esther knows that it made you feel like it was a violation of your privacy, but she did it because it was funny? How does it make you feel that she prioritizes what she thinks is funny over your safety? It, I, it feels like uh, regardless of all this, we should get married and have babies. <laughs> You know, it's interesting. You either can't answer it or you won't. And both are interesting. <laughs> Dave, how does it make you how does it make you feel he's that Esther, Esther prior? No, he's Dave now. I'm Dave. Dave, yeah. how does it make you feel that Esther prioritizes what she thinks is funny over your safety and um, and uh, autonomy? I it's a little weird that you still don't get it. Can I interject, though, <laughs> that I haven't done it since and I won't. So that's, I can't, I also am not a big yeah. person about like, oh, if I could go back, it's like, I'm, that conversation is so foreign to me because it's like, I live so much in reality. Like we can't go back. We can't change anything. And so, no, I, I'm not going to think about going back, but moving forward, I haven't done it. I've wanted to, I haven't, I won't. Mm -hmm. But do you think you sh still should have gone to see me? I think what Dave is asking is, even though you've moved past it, he might carry some resentment and that I mean, it's not resolved I, I, at least. Well, it was a long time. The truth is, I don't, I'm at the stage now where I don't really care. Right. It's been long enough, but it is weird. Well, why is it weird? And why do you say you don't really care? Because I haven't, I honestly hadn't thought about it in a long time. Now that we're talking about it. I guess I expected her at some point to say, like, obviously I shouldn't have done it. You're saying asking that, for accountability. Yeah, yeah. Based but that on never happened. how you feel, I shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But. but why but? I don't think you really feel that way. There's nothing I can do about it now. Well, I think what you can do is acknowledge how David feels in an effort um, to at least have some character development as we continue the role play, Dave. I hate character development. Well, that's why your show's going to make it... <laughs> no, I, I like shows with... Seinfeld had no character development. It's two things. One, and I think we could all agree, Seinfeld is an anomaly. And, so? And, it can still be my two, preferred choice. Two, what it does have is very, 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 very strong points of view. Yeah, you don't think I have that? Well, do you understand his... What does that have to do with me having one? Well, the show doesn't work without multiple points of view. Yeah. And they all have to go together. I think you're kind of reaching. And I think that I just don't like character development. And how does that make you feel? <laughs> it makes me feel like... Do you think I'm reaching in, in a place where it's it's not giving you your <laughs> respect and anonymity? No, I'm now I'm just lost. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. And thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in conclusion... Um, Esther, if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? Well, I can't do it all over again because I don't believe in time travel yet. But, but when you do, and you will later in the future. But in the future, if Dave decides to have another bachelor party, which he totally can because... We're he, not married yet. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that was actually a group bachelor party. That's true. It was me and a couple so other it's, guys. So it would be were, even harder to recreate, unfortunately. No, but he could have his own... <laughs> He could have, he, Dave should totally have his own new, if he wanted to, he could have his own new bachelor party Sick. and I will not show up. Whether it's in this state or another state like last time, I will not show up. I have an idea. Uh, also, Dave, tell me how you feel about that. That's like the baseline <laughs> thing that should be said. Yes, of course. I would hope that that would be the case. Well, I have a suggestion, and that suggestion is we should have a bachelor party for you. <laughs> and because guys and girls speak such different languages, we should have it sponsored by Babbel. Oh, let's talk about it. Uh, we will later. Okay. Well, we already did earlier in the episode. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, how are we on time here? Did you finally get disgusted by yourself? It was something else. <laughs> right. You were just thinking about how you took accountability? <laughs> kind of. Um, I do remember that trip, though, and I do remember Fahim was playing at uh, Jimmy, Kimmel's Jimmy Kimmel's Club. Club. Wait, why were you there? Um, you won't believe me if I tell you. Okay, try me. Uh, 
a girl I was hear? a girl I was dating was on a girls only trip and I <laughs> felt it would be funny to lie and by lie I mean leave a phone that has my <laughs> location in another place and knock on her door to make sure that she wasn't wait can I also say one other thing Dave about it Mm -hmm. is I really thought he knew I was going because <laughs> that's, power so crazy. Would you agree? that's so crazy I thought there was a good chance because I was being so sloppy about it leading up to it like I remember driving him to the airport and being like what's your room number like I was being so mm -hmm. obvious and you told you knew the room number before you got there how's that possible remember. he was checking in on his phone on the car yeah. right there and because I knew that I would need his. I've never gotten my room number until I got the key. So the time, the time frames aren't matching know, up for me. There is something. There was something I got. I, I might be in my stand-up so I don't remember. But if something about getting him, if I knew if I got his room number, I could get the Wi-Fi. And I don't know why I needed that. I can't remember the details of this hijinks. How did you feel before knocking on the door? Did you I take was a breath? nervous, excited, silly, high. You know, not high, high, but like normal Hello, the fact that you thought that i thought you would be coming I shows know. you just how far from my <laughs> mind you were <laughs> i have learned that now yeah 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 that he, he doesn't yeah. pick There's up on no things. man he doesn't pick ever... up on things you think that's on him not picking he... up on it as opposed to him just trusting you it's it's more like some people are like always vigilant and looking for clues for stuff like our friend john campanelli like he knows everything that's but going on but if you're on. looking for clues for things for, for to, if you already have your hypothesis you will find things to validate it okay that's also true we cut you off i'm sorry go ahead do you remember what you were saying just that no man would have any reason to be in the slightest bit You're suspicious totally right. that their fiance would show up unannounced to their bachelor party unless they would be unless that stuff happens which it hadn't to that it, point. No one in history had done that to this point. I, I mean, <laughs> I, to my knowledge. When he yeah. was unhappy, why did you then... Did you did you not see him again until the plane ride home? I don't think I did. Yeah, no, I think I was yeah. like, I'm so sorry. I think he was like a little disturbed. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I have plans don't tonight. I'm staying at a different... I'm sorry. But... <laughs> I was like, I'm staying at another hotel. I have my own plans. You will not see me until the plane ride home <laughs> um so episode title uh it's a little bit f uh uh in, in the play of the movie wedding crashers i'm thinking of bachelor bachelor party crashers but that implies that i too did it and i think just for a title maybe that's poetic license the other version is esther crashes her fiance's bachelor party it's a little word heavy as a writer what is your pitch um because I'm seeing a, th a thumbnail where we take the 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 movie poster of the hit movie Wedding Crashers. <laughs> oh, that's good. And we put my face and her face. That's good. And instead of Wedding Crashers, yeah. we call it Bachelor Bachel Party Crashers. Sure, do that. Yeah, that's good. Cute. And then maybe in the title we say Esther crashes fiance's bachelor party. Or is it Dave crashes this episode? There's wow. two kinds of crashing. It's really beautiful. Well, I wow. do think if we were to pick one, it would be the bachelor party one. <laughs> That's fine. But I do see the irony in that. Thank you so much. And maybe analogies aren't your thing, but maybe irony is. Maybe. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm irony deficient. <laughs> maybe it's puns. I hate puns. <gasps> oh my God, they're so embarrassing. Bleep it out. No, I'm just kidding, but... Good. Well, <laughs> maybe you're maybe it's bleep comedy. And these are all the things you could learn about at Esther's comedy classes. No puns, no irony, no analogies, but there is beep. Just the mistakes that you've made along the way. That's comedy. As Homer would call it, mmm, mistakes. Are you a fan of The Simpsons? Let me guess. No. I'm uh, literally so wrong. I'm such a huge fan. I just was looking up how to watch them and you have to get Disney Plus. I love The Simpsons. Dave wrote an episode of The Simpsons and he was nominated for an Emmy. What episode? Uh it's called The Town. It's a it's an episode yeah. all about Boston. The Simpsons go to Boston. And I mean I, I wrote a freelance episode of it, but to say that I wrote it is pretty absurd. It's like obviously Well that's how I television wrote it. I know, but are. I just feel like it's, Dave is very humble. In this case especially understood. Uh Matt Selman, Brian Kelly were like 
the producers of it and asked me to write a freelance episode. Yeah. What year was this? What year was it? I don't know. Five or six years ago? Yeah. Yeah, it would it have was... been out of my, I've yeah. seen every episode yeah. range. Yeah. Wow. That's an exclusive class. Arguably more exclusive than being on SNL. Interesting. I, that's Now that's a good debate. Do more... Uh, Higher or lower number? Sorry, how am I trying to phrase this? The exclusivity doesn't, I don't necessarily mean the number of people. Oh, okay. But here's what I want to ask. Number of people who have written episodes of The Simpsons. Versus num- cast members of Versus SNL. number of men whose bachelor parties have been <laughs> su- surprise oh, visited the, by their The amount of fiance. people that have written an episode of Simpsons dwarfs I think so one. too, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I have an analogy. The episode, the writers of the episode of The Simpsons are to the um, Milky Way as people who have crashed their fiance's bachelor or bachelorette party is to our galaxy. Snickers? Our, 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 our no, you're solar great with system. analogies. <laughs> really Does good. our solar system have a name? I don't know, man. Do you know? No, Milky Way is our galaxy. Simpsons writers. Does our solar system have a name? What is it's this It's so podcast? funny to me. Like It's just called the solar system because our sun is sometimes called soul. It's so, like, and I don't, I'm not trying to insult you at all, but of like, course. I'm it's sure, so I'm sure. boomery to like have to look things up. As opposed to just pretending you know it? No. Like you? Oh, I'd never do that. I'd just be like, I don't know. And then like the flow moves Let's on. Let's cut to a montage of all the times Esther said, I don't know. <laughs> and we're back. I never that's I think that's actually like a not to be you know Go sexist ahead. I do think that's a common guy thing to I do think guys want to know something and they look it up and I love when I don't know something I love it how do you have the time to do anything then you'd be looking up everything all day <laughs> well that's why I don't do it okay <laughs> checkmate <laughs> that's chess yeah yeah um What's boomery about looking something up? I've just noticed that like older people, they're like, look it up. Like, I think it's because it's still such a new concept to them that they're able to look things up right off the, on the spot. And so they're more into it. Whereas someone like me is I'm like, we're the same age. I've, I know. That's why I'm surprised. That's why I'm surprised you're doing it. I'm saying it's typically something I see. On, would you like, say parents. I know a lot more than you? I wouldn't say that. Well, no. Why would you? You also wouldn't say I wouldn't do that again. Uh, yeah, I think I think you seem like you know a lot, but it's like I feel so, like you needed to hear that. No, I was just being silly. Okay. Do you think Same. that if there's something that you didn't know, that you'd be like, I don't know, but who cares? Or do you think I'm a curious person? I'd like to find this out. I do see you as the former. I am a curious person. But I'm really, it's really easy for me to drop. If someone's like, what movie was that? I'm like, and everyone's like, what movie was that? I'm like, I don't know. Let's move on. I do wonder if there's a connection to you being able to drop things and not care in relation to saying, hey, that was in the past. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Mm. I don't want to do the work. I don't want to look into it. Mm. Your thoughts? That's possible. Yeah, there could be some truth to that. Yeah. I do know I am on the opposite end of that spectrum, both in if there's something I want to know, I want to learn about it, as well as if there's something that is unresolved. And by unresolved, I don't mean something that's glaring at me that we need to figure this out. I just mean I never heard I'm sorry or I never heard I won't do that again, even though my day to day is okay, and I rarely think about it when it comes back up. It feels like I'm just I feel unseen and I do know I could over communicate that thing. Mm. And I also happen to Google stuff or ask people questions. Yeah. I'm a big question guy. Uh Uh-huh. I've had a doctor, like a general practitioner, tell me I take a deep breath whenever I see your name on my door (laughs) because you ask me too many questions. (laughs) That's okay. So we are very similar in that. Everybody I've told that to said that doctor is an asshole. (laughs) That is rude. Yeah. I don't see him anymore. Yeah. That's really rude. Yeah. Unprofessional thing for him to say. I was getting shoulder surgery and I was seeing him for two reasons. One, because uh, I don't remember what it was, but something unrelated to shoulder surgery. And two, uh, I'm going into under anesthetics and I just like, could you check? Give me a physical. I don't know. Like, wh- what are we doing here? Is this all? I'm doing my due diligence or asking for help. And then we did the physical and whatever. And then I said, 
I don't remember what it was, but I asked him a question about my shoulder. And instead of saying, I don't know, or, hey, Rick, we'd have to make another appointment. He goes, I only have so much time I could talk. And I said, it feels like you're annoyed with me. Is that something that is happening? And that's where he goes, you know, whenever I see your name on the door, I take a deep breath before I come in because you ask so many questions. Yeah, that's mean. And I go, well, do you think there's a better way for you to say that? <laughs> Did you say that? I don't remember what I said, but I know it was a version of that. And what happened? He didn't backpedal, but he did say, like he went into where he could have been before, which is, I only, maybe then he revealed, like I only have 15 minutes or five minutes or whatever per patient, and I only blah, 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 blah. And I, I think I said something like, that makes sense. Well, this is something I'm concerned about. So if I need to make another appointment with you, you could just tell me to do that instead of kind of dismissing my questions yeah um although i hate that like i hate when i ask a doctor a question and they're like that's another appointment and i'm like yeah we're you here are guy. a salesman like you're just trying to like sell me more appointments well we're trying to sell them on what prescription i have and the whole thing is fucked and let me tell you another thing you only have 15 minutes for me then see me when i get there bro i same this same office, actually. Different doctor. No, different office. Although I do have a doctor I love. Same now. Very much so. I went to a, this doctor's office. I see a different doctor in this office now. I went there. When I tell you I was in line four minutes late, I am, I am sure it wasn't five minutes yet. By the time I was able to check in, I don't know how long it was. Maybe it was five, six, seven, eight minutes. But I was in line before five minutes. Okay. Didn't think I had to be that early. I just was. Checked in waiting 20 minutes i know that happens but i still go like hey i know there's nothing we could do yet but could you figure out like am i next or whatever blah 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 blah, blah. an hour goes by to where i go up and i say hey what's happening can we figure this out we went back before and you said that i was gonna be next and she went and she went and she and the person the receptionist came and they were uncomfortable with the information they had to give me and said she said that she isn't going to see you because you were late and I said, no, that did not happen. I said, excuse me. That did not. She said she has a uh, she or we have a whatever the thing is that if you're more than five minutes late, then they can't see you. I said two things. First of all, I was in line checking in. But you could look at what it was. I was in five minutes. You you weren't available to see me to check in. And second of all, if that was the case, why make me wait an hour before you tell me? No, that's cr that's criminal. So I asked for the doctor's name because it was new. I was for, I was I haven't gone to this doctor yet. It was my doctor wasn't there. This and I got her name and I think I still have the paper. I feel like I talked about this on a podcast, but I saved the name because I remember thinking when I write a movie where I have a villain that is similar to this, I want to use her name. I don't remember, but I think I have. Did it you not somewhere. get seen? She apologized to me. Uh, the, no, I, the reception apologized. She said, I I'm so sorry. This is she was like acknowledging how ridiculous it was. I said, I'm here. I want to see somebody. And she talked to the head of staff or whatever this doctor and this person is busy he's going to squeeze you in it took maybe another 25 minutes and he saw me and he apologized so much for it she wouldn't tell also i waited an hour before needing to check in again for her to say i'm yeah, not going to see that's, him punishing that's me so effed up that's I, I almost feel like she was just overbooked and just used it as an excuse the, the 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 but like the ultimate using being late as a as a weapon yeah. when you are so disrespectful of our time yeah. Speaking of which, how are we? Are we going over too much? We um, I was just watching the Seinfeld where like George shows up and he oh he missed a day and then the the physical therapist charges him mm. for the missed day and then he shows up and she's like, Oh, she had to take a personal day and it was just yeah. There was a curb about that. Too, I'm sure. I I've also had it where one time I showed up to the doctor and they're like, Oh, this was cancelled. And I was like, you didn't tell me that. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 I drive so far because mm -hmm. it's like a lot of the doctors are in, on the west side. And so I was like, just d fought through Beverly Hills traffic and parking and stuff. But then they then they did because I, I, I was like, what are you talking about? And then the, like someone else in the office did end up seeing me. But yeah, they there is. I really dislike doctors. Like I have. Uh, I, I dislike this next week's theme. I dislike the uh, the culture of it, but I I love asking a doctor a question. Yeah, I love oh, I love it being and in I a love, hospital bed. Oh my really? god, the ER. Or you just like laying down. No, but the ER, it's like 
if anything goes wrong, like I'm in the right place. Sure. But let's, let's, let's get out of this because we only, we have to record one ad still. Uh, and it's for Babbel. So again, and what, what a help they have been because we speak different languages mm -hmm. and Babbel, I've now learned how to speak, um, rubbish. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs> anything you want to plug? No, I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it was really nice seeing you again. Yeah. Same. We had some time off. Yeah. Oh, we wanted to talk about something topical because there's such a quick turnaround. What's in the news? Did you hear that, uh, uh, you know, the RNC chair, Rona, uh, Rona McDonald, says that the GOP candidates are not debating to beat each other up, but to beat something else that it didn't finish? I think it's so crazy how everything's p politicized. Anyway, check in next week when we talk about <laughs> Esther's disdain for doctor's offices. I mean, well, time to go down. Jewish. There's a lot of smart young Jewish ladies in New York. Yeah. Believe me. <laughs>